Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial uh, video. Uh, I just want to say as well, <clears throat> uh, before we get into the video, just a huge, huge thank you for the response on my previous video. Uh, if you haven't seen that already, please go and check it out on that one. We do the Ultramarines. Uh, but I just want to say, like, <clears throat> I set this channel up like about a week ago. And the response, and I don't know what's happened to algorithm or anything, but it's just gone absolutely mental. I've got more subscribers than I could have ever even dreamed of at this stage. Like, I've had a YouTube channel in the past, and it took me forever to get this sort of numbers, like years. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much, and all your beautiful comments and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> back to the video. So I just want to start by saying this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Dark Angels. Seeing as everyone's jumping on the, that hype now, the Dark Angels hype with the uh, the lion coming out. Um, so I thought I'd give you my take on it and take a look at it in the grimdark style. And you're probably looking and noticing the colours of it already, even though the Dark Angels are normally like this really dark green. To me, it just, I don't know, the, the original dark green colour just don't really cut it for me. Like, I don't know why, there's just something a little bit off with it. And I like it when it's like super dark, I just don't like that really bright, saturated, edge highlighted look what people do. Um, but for me with the Dark Angels, because of this like, <clears throat> you know, these mysterious, secretive guys, I wanted like a green that were going to be a bit more, I can't pray, ethereal or... Something, you know, along those lines, which is why I went for this more, um, like, dark green aqua turquoise green, if that makes a sense. But anyway, we're going to get into the colour recipe of that. Uh, you'll notice in this video as well, uh, the miniature that I'm going to be painting, first off, is different to the one that we finish on. Uh, the reason for that is, obviously, I've decided to make two... Uh, Marines convert two of them. <clears throat> These are just from the new pack from I think it's the warp forged one the the new one with uh, Vashtor in it um, But yeah, that's from this kit and I used a bit of kit bashing Pieces from that kit to make uh, the ones that you're seeing right now uh, the reason I've done two is because originally I decided to kit bash two um, and halfway through the filming uh, of this, uh, one of the Marines, we uh, we, we sadly, we, we lost. He was lost in battle uh, as my four-year-old son, during a little break, uh, when he came over, decided it would look better uh, in his T-Rex's mouth, in the toy that he's got. It'd be better chewed up inside there. Hence is why we lost one of the uh, Dark Angels to uh, a T-Rex. Uh, but anyway, the, the process is all the same, but... Um, yeah, let's get into it. So the colour recipe for my uh, Dark Angels is quite simple, it's just two colours. Um, <clears throat> which is the Army Painter Angel Green, which is I presume a rip-off of the Citadel's Dark Angels Green. Um, and what I'd just start off by doing is using a top-down motion. <clears throat> so just spraying down from the top, down to the bottom, which is I really want to leave some of those black... Uh, dark shadows in there so you know I really like to enforce that contrast and leave a little bit of the the black into there and then all I do on top of that is a 50 50 mix of the AK interactive MM's Esmeralda bolt and uh, forgive me for messing up the names of these colors the if they're not hard enough to pronounce as it is I'm severely dyslexic so for the person who commented on my last video and gave me some rubbish for that can't help it mate really sorry <laughs> but yeah just a, a 50 50 mix uh, of those two colors and again when you're doing the highlight i'm just you know nipping in those highlights so it's, it's a bit like a zenithal spraying down um but again when you go over it with a highlight color uh, I'm, I'm like pulling that highlight in a little bit like raining it in and just you know, paying special attention to those parts where the, the, the light might hit. Because I don't want to oversaturate it with this colour. Um, as, you know, after we've done the wash phase, we're going to fetch that colour back up a little bit. Because I do go quite heavy with the uh, enamel wash on, on this miniature. Um, but you'll see a little bit later on how I fetch that back. Um, it does, on camera, look a little bit like the Sons of Horus green. But in real life, it's not that. It is more like the dark green with this little turquoise -y highlight to it, but yeah, you know, I just I just love how these these miniatures uh, turned out, and I think moving forward, 
if I ever do Dark Angels again, this is the, the colour recipe that I'll be using. Now one thing I want to quickly talk about, which is coming back to the prep before you even start to prime your miniatures, is one thing I love to do with cloaks or capes or any sort of like robes or anything like that is, when I'm putting the miniature together, what I tend to do with like the, the cloaks and stuff is I get quite an aggressive file. Um, I think Army Painter do like a set of three, which is ones that I use quite a lot. And they are quite like aggressive, like they do leave, you know, like a big mark behind. And towards the bottom, I'll, you know, I'll go, you know, from all different angles, filing it. And, and what that does, it, and as I start to do it a little bit further up the cape, it creates a little bit of texture uh, on that cape and makes it look, you know, like a bit tattered and worn. And then when you do put your washes on top, some of the some of the wash goes into those little creases and stuff, and it just really makes it stand out. And I know we spoke a little bit about this before uh, in the previous video about you know like adding crackle paints and stuff, which is something you can do depending on how battered you wanted it to look and how battle worn you want it to look. Um, but yeah, taking a file or a, like a, a sharp scalpel and just really you know scraping away at some of those bottom of those capes can really uh, enhance the the look of your miniature now for the robes themselves obviously the dark angels do have like their creamy looking robes they're not white or anything like that but what you want to be doing is starting with your darkest color which is obviously going to be like some sort of uh, darkish uh, brown um, which in grim dark style this is actually quite a light brown <laughs> but uh, i use ak colors for or for for the three colors that we're going to use on these robes and if you've not got any of the new ak uh, color range the acrylic ones they they're absolutely fantastic they they are really opaque like the coverage is unbelievable and because i'm watering them down uh, in this video they are really smooth but i did want to work up a little bit so i had to water them down quite heavily for this um, but we're going to be using three colors and the first one is AK dark brown and then we're going to work up <clears throat> using middle stone and then as a final highlight we're going to use light earth and it's entirely up to how you know how bright you want it to be if you want to put a little bit more light earth onto it in certain areas you're going to get that more creamy look to, towards it and obviously if you do go a little bit overboard uh, you can actually do that back down with a wash phase, which is when I'm painting Grimdark style, one tip I always say is aim a little bit brighter than what you're always wanting to achieve because when you do put these washes on, it is really going to dull that effect down. Now when it comes to highlighting it up uh, after your base colour, you might want a couple of coats to get that uh, solid base colour. Is I'm going to use a, a different technique now. I could go in and individually paint, you know, my highlights and shadows in there just using a single brush. But what I actually do, because of the, the prep phase that we've done previously, is I'm actually going to use a, a dry brush technique. Uh, now, the reason for this is what it does, because the, the, the dry brushing technique, it creates like these little strands, which gives that more you know, surface variation look to your cloaks. And because you've done that filing, what it's going to do, it's going to catch some of those edges uh, and, you know, really reinforce some of that prep work that you've actually done and giving it that overall, you know, more tattered look and making it look like cotton's flayed off and stuff like that. So as a, as a big recommendation, I can highly recommend, you know, dry brushing uh, some of those colours uh, as your highlights onto there. If you want to go back in a little bit after and paint some, you know, stronger highlights in with a single brush, you can do that. But honestly, if you've done the prep work, this is where it really pays off is when you when you do the dry brush and as you can see i'm not going like crazy in one direction what i tend to do with my dry brushing and depending on what i am dry brushing especially capes like this i use like little you know like sideways motions up and down motions i might use like a circular buffing motion uh, but ultimately you know i am just wanting to catch some of those edges you know what we've prepped previously now when it comes to the like you know like the metallic areas or you know trims or parts that you want to stand out just a little bit like might be like shoulder blades or you know bits on the belts and stuff like that i really really love citadel's uh, screaming bell and the reason for this it's a color i've had for a while i've never really used it but it's not gold it's not brass it's not bronze it's it's like its own little ready bronzy color and I think for the Dark Angels, because it's the you know like the secret group, I think it just gives them that little bit of uniqueness, like gives that like unique little look to the metallics, um, where it's not like your standard gold trim or anything like that. But I, you know, I really I highly recommend this color when it comes to uh, painting. You know, like if you want it to stand out. 
Now the next stage is completely up to you and whatever colours you want to go for. You know, for like the little daggers and the little trinkets that are uh, around him. This is entirely up to you. It's your phase. You put your little twist on it. But the normally the Dark Angels, when it comes to like the the, the trim on their armour, like the, the fancy looking bits like the angel holding the sword and stuff, usually these are done in like a bony colour. Uh, but for me, I wanted these to be more of a white colour. And my recipe for that was really simple. Start with a neutral grey, highlight that up with an even brighter grey, and then slowly working your, your way up towards a, a white highlight. Uh, but this phase, before we go into the wash phase, is entirely up to you. You can paint your, you know, your little bits and bobs, however, however you want to do that. For the metal, uh, again, for the metal parts, it's a colour I always use, which is uh, Scale 75 Trash or Thrash Metal. And that's a really nice, like, base standard mid-tone silvery metallic colour. Now for the wash, again, you know, I went over this in a previous video. For my, most of my washes, I do pretty much use the same enamel. It's either, you know, uh, AK Interactive Dark Brown Wash or the, the MIG. I think it's just called Dark Brown or Dark Wash. Uh, these are just enamels. Um, check out some of my previous videos if you don't know how to use these. Uh, but for this one, I go, I do go quite a little bit heavier with it. I don't thin it down as much. And again, we go straight into the uh, reductive stage, or reductive stage, where you know you just dampen a cotton bud or your paintbrush in some mineral spirits, and you can tech that away as much or as you know keep as little or as much as you want. Now this next phase is probably my favourite phase to do, um, which is you know fetching a little bit of those colours up, and because I don't necessarily like the the envy metal style, um, I don't want to be edge highlighting everywhere. I'm only edge highlighting certain areas where the light's going to catch, and the technique I use for that is I don't think there's a name for it. It's, I sort of got it from ri watching a lot of Richard Gray videos, because I didn't want to put any chips or dings on this armour. I still wanted it to, you know, to be looking pretty clean-ish, but I still wanted it to have some like surface scratches and a little bit of wear and tear here and there. Um, basically, the, the way to do this is, you know, using your colours that you've previously used to airbrush on top of that, because you've dulled it down already, it's going to, you know, highlight it that little bit more. Is you're just working in exceptionally thin layers and only applying a tiny little bit to your brush, and you're just catching the edges like these little scratchy whippy little you know like dots and stuff like that here and there where you would normally hedge edge highlight but you're not really you're just like sort of dotting it on and when you build those layers up and i think i had a little bit of ice yellow towards the end um into my original color just you know to make it like an extra layer on top and what that does it just builds up that like battle worn look and it sort of gives you your armor like a dinged up look without even having to like you know go in with like adding chips and edge highlighting all them little bits and stuff like that but this phase I absolutely love it and I can't I highly recommend it enough and if you want to go and check out some of Richard Gray's video if you want to learn a bit more uh, about this technique but best thing I can do is <clears throat> thin layers and just using tiny tiny little bits on your brush and you'll be surprised at how, how far them little bits go I think I barely even take my brush off at some of these points you know just having little bits on your brush and it's just a little practicing technique just really thin just scratching surface uh, of your miniature and uh, you'll be good to go one thing to know is when you first put it on don't be scared it is going to look quite bright compared to your color underneath but obviously as we know sometimes when acrylics dry uh, they tend to dull a little bit further down obviously because it's got that enamel underneath it it's going to dull it down just a little bit more so don't be too scared of that a uh, quick note on flesh on hoods so let's say if you, you know your character like this one has got uh, its face uh, underneath there what you want to do is you're only going to highlight sections like you know like the tip of the nose and towards the, the the bottom of his mouth like his chin and his lips and stuff and what that does it creates like a, a shadow effect which you would naturally have you know if you've got your hood up and it just makes it even look that little bit moodier now I'm probably going to upset a lot of people <laughs> when I talk about this next little phase um, now I, I'm not I'm going to be totally honest I'm not a fan of non-metallic metals um, probably the main reason for that is I've not practiced it enough I probably can't do it but overall I'm just not a huge fan of it I think you know there's the people out there that can do it unbelievable um, but for me it's not something that that I can do which is probably why I work with more true metals um, but there's a little technique that I've figured out that you can actually use to get that you know that non-metallic metal look using 
metallics, if that makes sense. So how we're going to do it is, like you can see on this when I'm doing it on the sword, I'm putting like some little dinks and scratches on the sword. And the best way to do this is you start off with a really dark, you know, like dark metallic colour. So near enough black, and if you have to mix a little bit of black in there, do it. And then the same technique as what we've used previously, be like the little scratching techniques, is you want to use like a dark, a medium, and a really bright. And all you're going to do is, as you would paint, you know, like non-metallic metal in certain areas, we're just going to do that, but with the metallics. And what you do get with that is, even it's all still metallic, but you're still able to get, you know, like some little bits of detail in there, like the little scratches and the dinks and mech areas look a little bit shinier. Um, but if you've never tried this, go out, try it, and I think you'll be surprised with, you know, some techniques and looks that you do get. Uh, the glow on sword's pretty simple, just using contrast paint, heavily watered down uh, to uh, build up your desired effects. And you can use whatever colour you want for this, blues, greens, oranges, reds, whatever tickles your fancy. And that's pretty much it for this miniature, you know, once I've added a little bit of, you know, like rust or little streaks here and there, which I'm going to get into in another video, which is probably my next one, which is going to be three different ways of painting metal. Um, and, and two of those don't even use any enamels or oils or any special products or anything like that. It's just using acrylic paint. I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, that's your miniature pretty much done. Um, so yeah, there we have it. There's the, the, the Dark Angels, my little take on the, the Dark Angels. If you do have any questions, you know, about the colours or anything like that, you know, if there's any techniques you want me to go a bit more in depth with on some of the future videos, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, you know, I love interacting with you guys. I love seeing your comments, and it's such a great community to be in this. And, and what I love about it is, you know, you're always leaving comments and stuff like that, which is what I love. So just let me know a comment below. You know, what did you think of it? You, you can write anything. You know, tell me your dog's name. It's whatever you want. You know, let's, let's chat. <laughs> uh, but anything specific around painting or miniature painting, just just let me know in the comment section below. And again. I can't stress you know how much I'd love for you if you just want to hit that subscribe button. I've got so much planned for the future and I think you're really going to dig it. Some techniques that you might have never seen before or different ways of going about stuff and ways that you might have not thought. If you're not already, please, you know, it really helps this video out as well if you do hit that like button. I'm a very small channel, just still trying to grow. So, you know, out of the goodness of your heart, I beg you, just hit that like button if you could. It really helps me get this video out there and uh, yeah if you're not already if you want to see some more of the miniatures that i paint head over to uh, my, uh, my my instagram which is the feral painter if you want to check out some of them on there if you want to give me a follow please do but guys again thank you so much for sticking around and uh yeah i will catch you in in my next video and i hope my son won't feed my next miniature to uh, his his t-rex anyway thanks again and i'll see you soon